Welcome to the Supernatural with Laura Maxwell on Eternal Radio. In these programs, we will hear the true supernatural accounts from those who try various spiritualities. You shall tell the truth, and the truth shall make you free. EVP Recordings, The Ghost Box, The Spiricom Device, and more. Paraphernalia that paranormal investigators use when they hope to record spirit voices and so on. This is a special show and we have a returning guest and his name is Mark Hunneman. Mark is author of Seeing Ghosts Through God's Eyes and he was on the show last year it was such a good interview it became six sorry five parts and <laughs> it, it was really really good I recommend it probably one of the my most favorite interviews that, that I've conducted so far um, just because Mark has such a knowledge of of these things and, and really shows the deception of them you can find those interviews on my blog our spiritualquest.com if you go in there and just type Mark Hunneman's name in the search those five interviews will come up and you can also find them on my YouTube channel which is Laura Maxwell X Spiritist and you'll see those five interviews um, are in a playlist and that's entitled Ghosts, Light Beings, Spirit Communication, etc. So basically I want to go now to Mark and welcome him again to the show. Hi Mark. Hey Laura, it's great to be with you. Thank you very much. And and uh, speaking for myself, as those five interviews were uh, the highlight of my whole ministry since I've been in this paranormal um, ministry for the last, I guess, since 2009. So it was it was just so wonderful. So thank you. This is a real spiritual treat to be back with you. Well, you know, I, I feel the same, Mark, about, you know, my time in ministry. I, I think that my interviews with you have, have been one of my favorites, too, as I say, just because it's, it's a topic that you have thoroughly uh, investigated um, with the help of the Holy Spirit and um, yeah. I, I personally there may be someone out there who um, knows as much as you on this topic but I personally haven't discovered that person yet um, so <laughs> you know as far as I'm concerned you know you're someone that I really look up to and I really admire your work and your dedication for helping people um, be set free from these things when uh, they become attacked by Evil Spirits, um, your deliverance ministry, obviously, as well. I ju I'm just really, really thankful to God that um, he connected us online. Uh, me too, Laura. I tell you, when, when I got introduced to this whole notion of ghosts back in 2009, it was, it, it had to be the Lord. Well, I know it was the Lord because it, it was something that then and even more now is like a, a dog with a bone. I just can't let loose of it. And that's why I know it's God's calling to, we can't, we can't do everything. We, we all have to um, follow our specific callings. And I believe that God has called me to, to help people to have, God's viewpoint on the paranormal in general and on ghosts in particular. And um, that's my passion because, as you know, it, if it was exploding in 2009, it's uh, mushrooming even more uh, today. So mm -hmm. uh, the ministry is definitely needed. Um, Absolutely. Anyway. Absolutely. And I think it's one of the most common deceptions out there. Um, there's just so much of ghost hunting programs on TV and magazines featuring ghost stories a lot. And yeah, it's 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 become very 
very common now, I would say, compared to the past. Um, well, actually, yeah. In fact, I would assert, um, I have said on many occasions, Laura, that I, I do believe that the notion of ghosts has become Satan's most successful and effective uh, door opener for the demonic uh, in the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's not to say there aren't other many, many, uh, many other door openers for sure, but that's just my opinion. I think so, and I think it's just maybe one of the most easily accessible for people too. Um, right. You know, so we're in 2017, and um, yeah, I just think it's very common to the extent where now there are even uh, believers, Christian believers who are getting into it, Whereas mm. in the past, they, they, they wouldn't have. Um, and again, if any Christians are listening, I'd like to say right from the start, I know that and I've met some. But can I say years and years ago, um, a Christian actually prophesied to me that I would meet Christians in ministry who were, who were into this and that I would help to show them the truth. And that has been what's happened. I meet Christian deliverance ministers who... On the one hand, they're casting demons out of people in homes, but on the other hand, they're also thinking that they're sending ghosts onto the light. And I've, gen mm, I've yeah. gen gently said to them, not in a self-righteous way, because uh, uh, that is not my heart at all, but I've gently mm. said to them, it's because you're allowing yourself to be deceived by this. Test it. Test it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Test it. And these deliverance ministers who are well experienced in deliverance, have went and tested the so-called ghost in Jesus' name and got back to me and said, Laura, you were right, that wasn't a ghost after all. You know, I was deceived into thinking there were ghosts and there were demons. Now I realise, no, it's all the same. So anyone can be deceived. We sure can. And I just want to say this for the audience is that you have an incredibly winsome uh, approach and attitude, Laura, that I really admire and that, that uh, I, I strive to try to consciously strive to see you as a model in that area because you're so loving but so, yet so um, valiant for truth. And I, true, I too see so many Christians who have that inconsistency, a real love for Jesus, um, but they are trying to they are definitely casting out demons, but they they have this um, or just they have an unbiblical view of the notion of trapped spirits, mm -hmm. and so that is my passion as well is to help people to to get their minds cleared because it's such a subjective uh, decision on deliverance ministers part in trying to discern the difference between a quote human haunt and a demonic haunt and nowhere in the bible certainly the gift of discernment was not given for that purpose that gift of discernment was given to discern between demonic spirits and um the holy spirit mm -hmm. um first john 4 1 and following because people try to use that verse, Laura, to mm -hmm. say, well, get, well here, here's the gift of discernment. And our, so we're supposed to try to discern between human spirits and demons. No, that verse, nowhere in that um, text, Laura, is a notion of earthbound spirits. It's an either-or between demonic spirits that we're testing for or whether or not this um, voice or happening comes from the Holy Spirit. It's an either or, the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. or an unholy spirit. There's no tertium quid or middle ground, namely a human spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bible doesn't allow for that. And really, you know, that there's so many scriptures that sometimes people will uh, point to as proof, as it were, but we also know that our looking at it in context and the whole big picture and other scriptures yeah. that actually show, no, it's not. These entities are actually uh, demons. And if they test it in the Jesus name, um, they, they, they will see that um, for for themselves, often quite a shock to the system, but, but it's, it's, it's true. And I well, think, yeah. I th before um, um, we, we, we start on this show, 
um, you see, I, I often forget, and I know you're the same, Mark, because we are constantly in contact with people who have been affected by such things, we sometimes forget the the very obvious and the very basic key points, as it were, just because we, we are so used to it. Um, yeah. For example, today and yesterday, I've had people contact me who have been involved in um, going to mediums, they've been involved in channeling, they've been involved in psychic phenomena, and they got to the stage where um, they tried to come out of it and um, these so-called ghosts and so-called spirit guides showed their true colours as being demons and have been attacking these people constantly. Um, and, you know, we hear about this all the time, but we forget to emphasise it on our shows at, at times, I think. So I felt it would it was good for me to say, say this right yeah. at the start as a deterrent for people. If there's anyone out there and they're thinking of using the ghost box or they're thinking of channelling, please consider this first as a deterrent that often people involved in these things have no problems whatsoever. They might do it their whole life long, but it's only most times we have found it is only when these people try to stop these activities and test these entities in Jesus' name, they discover they're actually demons and then the demons begin to attack and then the person needs deliverance and freedom uh, through Jesus Christ. So there'll be so many people who say, well, I play the ghost box. I use it all the time. Nothing happens to me. Yeah, because you've not tried to break away from it yet. And if you did that, you would see the spirits will then turn against you. And this mm. is why um, Mark and I share what we do to try and deter people from getting involved in the first place. Um, yeah. And and whether whether it's physical attack, a lot of people contact me and say the demons are literally attacking them physically, literally shouting at them, cursing them, telling them to commit suicide, or whether it's not that, but it's actually a whole string of health issues come into your life, or it just seems people will say to me, it just seems like my family's just being besieged by bad luck. It's not always physical attack; it can be other forms of attack. But either way. Um, Mark and I would just urge you, please, to, to, to listen to this show and to consider um, what we have to say because it just may well save your life. And it's as point blank as that. My mother killed herself because of these yeah. things, so it's not an exaggeration when I say this just might save your life. Mm. Would you like to add anything to that, Mark? Kind of hard to after you mention your mom and, and, and how... Um personal that is to you only only just to to say that I, that I, I f firmly and passionately agree with you that the um, the form of a demonic presence can um, it doesn't always have to be crucifixes flying off the wall it can be what I have come to call a quote happy haunt um, that is for years and years, the demonic spirits, they don't have to act cruel. They are cruel and they're pure evil, but if they can get into a home and be um, welcome there for 30 years and cause that family to walk in the wrong direction spiritually just by their, their quiet presence, the family might not even see any paranormal activity, but if they've got involved in some forbidden activity, like trying to, to collect, solicit EVPs or using the Ouija board, just to name a couple of things, you know, it, it kind of, the analogy I use is that of like spiritual radioactivity. Uh, these unclean spirits can just sit quietly for years and be emanating off this unclean, unhealthy, um, radi spiritual radiation that has a systemic effect. It can be physical, emotional, psychological, and most of all spiritual or a combination of them. But the worst is that with this long-term um, influence in which they're speaking into your mind, 
your it's influencing your view of Christ, and before you know it, a person who is so fired about up about Jesus is now entertaining the thought that well, Jesus may be just one way of many ways to to heaven, mm-hmm. and that's the sort of thing that uh, has been uh, on my mind. My mind recently is a more covert activity of Satan, and is what I again call a happy haunt. Of course, none of them are really happy, but it, it appears that way. Mm-hmm. And many people, again, don't think that if they ever if they think of a demonic haunt at all, it has to get to the, the degree where you know things are flying off the wall. There's growls um, and that sort of thing. And there's nothing in the Bible that says that demons have to come across in a cruel. Um, way that makes their demonic identity absolutely um, clear. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things are very deceptive. They can make your house feel peaceful. They make it feel holy. They can make it um, smell, uh, you know, in a rosy, literally beautiful way. Mm -hmm. So the the whole idea of people coming in, I've heard this, Laura, I know you have too, saying that they can just sense that it's the Holy Spirit or they can just sense that it's a human spirit and not a demon because of the way they feel. And God hasn't given that ability to people to, again, to make that. um, I mean, we're naive to think that we can put our meager resources up against the evil one Mm -hmm. who's much more intelligent, much more powerful and been around for thousands of years. And it just saddens me that people would rely on their own senses and not on God's Word um, and then the biblical gift of discernment. So yeah, I'll and, stop. Uh, you know, especially when there are those in Christian ministry who have been in ministry for years and yet, you know, the, the Bible talks to uh, fellow Christians and it says, test prophecies you know test you know the apostle paul um told others to test prophecies so it doesn't matter yeah he how- said test me he said if i yeah. i come with the gospel or an angel from heaven that mm-hmm. preaches a gospel other than what i preach to you let him be damned to hell mm-hmm. let him be anathema so you know we all i mean if paul says test me <laughs> you know we definitely need to test the spirits. We do need to test them, and um, basically, uh, that, that's why why we do what we do to to show folks. You know that people might say, "Well, the ghosts aren't doing any harm; they're just dead people." Blah blah blah. Well, you know, we would argue them not because if you look at all down throughout history, all down throughout different cultures and ages. A common theme that you will get from any type of spirit, whether it claims to be a ghost, whether it claims to be a spirit guide, um, an alien, whatever it may claim to be, a very common thread through all of that will be that they will often say there are many ways to God. Jesus isn't the saviour. There are many different ways. It doesn't really matter. Um, You know, you do what you want to do spiritually they will all say that type of message, which, as you just said, Mark, is like an angel from heaven preaching another gospel. If they yep. do not say Jesus is the only way, um, and that's not us being elitist, we feel Jesus is the only way. And interestingly, if a spirit says that to you, challenge it and say to it in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, show me your true identity. So on the one uh, hand, yeah. you'll, you'll have these spirits. On the one hand, these spirits will tell you, you can follow any God you want, you can do anything spiritual you want. But on the other hand, that very same entity will scream at the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth if you challenge it in his name. So it's uh, contradicting itself. You know, Laura, Laura, one thing that has come to my mind recently is this very frustrating phenomenon and that is that just what you said which makes perfect sense pleading with people for their own good to 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 do just a real simple test 
but I, I have found um, talking with some 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 brothers um, who are going through a hard time because they have pled and pled with people. Uh, they've written books, and it's just that they've just come to a point of burnout because they know dozens, perhaps hundreds of people who have pretty significant paranormal activity in their homes, but they won't listen mm-hmm. to him as far as testing the spirits. They just don't want to. Mm-hmm. And it's just so bizarre. But I know it's part of the poisoning of the mind and the putting of a veil um, and drowning out logic and clear reasoning that the devil is so good at. Um and, I mean, I just had a real good friend who just dropped off Facebook who had a very powerful ministry. And, and I think it was because he he, he just got so um, crushed, Laura, because uh, he had such a heart for the people who were mm-hmm. under attack. Mm-hmm. But they would not heed his warnings. Mm-hmm. And um, so we, we ask and plead with you that you would feel our hearts because we don't, see ourselves as any better than anybody. Mm -hmm. Jesus is the only way, but he's the one who created the narrowness, so to speak, um, as far as salvation. Christians didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, He is the one who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father but through me. So as Christians, we have to follow our Lord's lead. So again, it's Jesus. You know, Really and truthfully, we are very blessed that there is even a way Mm -hmm. um, to heaven because we all deserve to go to hell. So we're blessed that the Lord Jesus freely and voluntarily chose to come and die for our sins because he could have left us in our sins. Mm -hmm. So... um, It's true, and, and, and I think, you know... So many people who contact us will tell us once they left, trying ghost boxes once they left, channeling these entities, they suddenly realise these entities turned on them and basically tried to take them to hell. These entities would make it feel like hell on earth for the person, but also would goad the person to kill themselves, would goad the person uh, saying that Jesus isn't real, Jesus can't help you and all that. You know, they just want to lie to people about Jesus Christ. They want to lie to people about salvation and heaven because they're of the devil and they want people to go to hell. They want to kill, steal and destroy. And that's why we're so passionate about um, sharing with people the way we do. Um, So let's get on to this, this show then. And really, as I say, please check out Mark Hunneman's shows on my YouTube from last last time but today we want we want to look at evp recordings so you know you'll probably hear a lot of that today there's a lot of tv programs about it collecting evps or like using the ouija board or the ghost box and there's different varieties of of these types of things there's the spiritcom device frank's box the dibuk box speak jet box, ovalis, dowsing rods, and so on. They have this veneer of the the scientific method, which would seemingly sanction it and legitimize, which is really just an age-old occult practice. It doesn't matter how much science you can attach to these things or or show how clever uh, the scientific analysis of these things are. Yes, science can... Uh, prove these things are supernatural of course it can but it can't tell you if it's a demon or not that's one thing it can't do um so what is an evp it stands for electronic voice phenomenon evp is typically captured on a recording device such as a digital voice recorder or a camcorder There are currently many new technologies that paranormal investigators and ghost hunters use to capture EVPs. 
and they show up on these electronic uh, devices. They're usually conducted in a reportedly haunted location and the investigator attempting to capture the EVP will ask questions such as, what is your name? Why are you here? And they will pause to allow any entity present to answer. So obviously the paranormal investigators believe these EVPs capture voices of dead humans or ghosts or spirit guides or just any otherworldly type of entity. Now, as a former New Age spiritualist myself, um, I've been down that road. My mother and I were into that kind of stuff for years. Um, and basically, I would say folks are doing it nowadays. Folks are buying these um, EVP recordings as gifts. They're even buying them as gifts for their children, you know, as, as a toy almost. But a Ouija board or an EVP recording isn't a toy because it does open a door or a portal to these evil demons that can come through. And as I say, if you're in any doubt, please go to my blog. There's articles there about testing the spirit in Jesus' name, um, mm. where you can find out how to do that. Even spirits that will uh, impersonate the living. You know, they don't always pretend to be dead people. There's plenty of people contact me and say spirits will impersonate their living grandfather who's still alive. You know, they're, they're liars, these demons. They'll impersonate anyone. So basically, I want to go now to Mark and ask him, to share a little he has found out about EVP recordings and so on and he had a particularly interesting story um, about a friend of his who wanted to perform EVP recordings on Halloween is that right Mark? Sure was um, you want me to go ahead and jump in then? Jump in this? yep yep absolutely. Alrighty. Well uh, a while back actually in 2011 <laughs> Um, uh, Halloween, October 31st, 2011. Uh, on this Halloween night, uh, a friend of mine, Dan, who has an internet internet radio show, um, he announced in advance that he was going to experiment with a Ouija board. And um, Dan was pretty well known um, in and out of the paranormal community and all throughout Facebook. And there was a big uproar about this. Um, about his an experiment, and I'll get to why he did the experiment in just a moment. Mm -hmm. But he inter he had interviewed me a couple of days uh, prior to that um, to get my opinion, because what he wanted to do was that at the stroke of midnight on Halloween 2011, he was going to start this um, using of the. Um, Ouija board, a spirit board, in order to try to prove a point. Mm -hmm. Actually, it's a good point that he's trying to prove, but the means by which he was doing it uh, was not good. But I'll, I'll get back to that. But anyway, I was honored to be on his show. And um, as you can imagine, Dan caught a lot of flat for doing what he was doing, as well as people worried, you know, what might happen to him. Mm -hmm. um, uh, However, to me, it was very interesting to hear the reason as to why he was going to try to um, investigate or experiment with uh, a Ouija board. And he was using it for illustrative purposes. Uh, what I mean is that Dan's sole reasoning in using a Ouija board, which he knows can lead to opening to a portal to the demonic, is that he really wanted to graphically illustrate a deep concern he has. Mm. Um, namely, he wanted to persuade people, and this is what's key, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. y'all who are listening, please listen to this. He wanted to persuade people that the uh, widespread practice of collecting EVPs is no different than using a Ouija board. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'll say that again. He wanted to show that the, the widespread practice of collecting EVPs is really no different than using a Ouija board. And he was one of the few people in the paranormal community that I have heard have the guts to say that. So oh, I was gosh. really touched. Oh. And 
because he said, and I, I, I had written an article to stating that um, way back then, and he said that it, it is it basically it's the same principle in action. If you, you think about it for a moment, mm-hmm. when a person verbally solicits a response from, from a particular spirit, they are treating. I'm talking about EVPs now. They are treating the room they are in as if it were a giant Ouija board. Mm -hmm. Okay? I mean, you take uh, ghost hunters or paranormal investigators, they go into the room, and they say, is there someone here? What's your name? And so on. Same kind of questions that you would ask on a Ouija board. They have no control over who or what may come through the portal the topos, the Greek word in Ephesians 4.26 that talks about an opportunity or doorway or foothold. Uh, exactly the same problem that has caused the Ouija board to become largely forbidden, even the paranormal community, not everybody, but mm-hmm. for most people. Um, but what they haven't seen until Dan tried to force the issue was that they were being inconsistent that the EVP is essentially just in a large version or a, um, as you use the word, which is very good, the, the, um, with all this technology, it has the veneer of the scientific, um, which does nothing because they're um, between the Ouija board and the typical way that EVPs are solicited today, there's no difference that makes a difference. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There's... There's minor differences and so far, but basically the methodology is the same. Mm-hmm. Um, the gathering of EVPs has become the bread, and I noticed this early on, Laura, is that the gathering of EVPs has become the bread and butter or the backbone of paranormal investigations. Um, I think it was true in the past, and I think it's true now. So... That means that the backbone of paranormal research, as it's currently practiced, has been broken, irreversibly paralyzing the standard investigating procedure if we can show the EVPs are dangerous. Mm -hmm. And by way of showing that the similarity between them and um, the Ouija board I I feel really strongly about this point, Laura. Mm-hmm. But I know that folks are going to be going to resist this big time. Mm-hmm. There's too much at stake. There's the the solicitation of EVPs again is at the backbone mm-hmm. of people's investigations, and some of some of the people who might be listening to this solicit EVPs, and it will be a real test as to whether you, you have a sincere, honest seeking for the paranormal truth. Mm-hmm. Because I can assure you the logic, the parallel between the two, the solicitation of EVPs and, and the weeds of wonder that it hasn't been a raging debate before now. Mm-hmm. And I, in my real article, I put if. It becomes one, and it really hasn't, Laura. And mm-hmm. I really see the devil behind this because what should have been so clear, mm-hmm. it never really picked up after I, that. Yeah, I'm the same. I'm, I'm, I just feel like, why haven't people saw the parallel? Why, to me, it just seems so obvious. It's like but, water but off a duck's back. It was like water maybe, off a duck's back. It's maybe hidden in plain sight, or it's maybe because it seems yep. so exciting that people don't want to really see any parallel in it but can I say as well you know back in the day when my mother and I were were into all this stuff you know we would read books on on spiritualism and and practices going way back and and we remember technology changes and, and progresses and advances of course it does but but the 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 main spirit behind these things is the same you know back in the day when photography was just newly discovered guess what happened mediums and ghost hunters they would use photography to to capture images of so-called dead people you know really right in the very beginning when it just was um when it when it was a photographic plate that was used 
you know, I can remember reading books about this, my mother and I being fascinated. So, yeah, we can use whatever technology of the day is available to us and it will give so-called proof. But, you know, we, we would urge you, it might prove, it might seem to prove an entity is in the room. Yes, of course, and we're not denying that. But we, we would say that you question the source of that entity and of that practice. And as we are saying, it's it's just a, a, a new method of an age-old occult um, divination method, basically. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's well put. It, it really is, no matter how you slice and dice it. That's what it boils down to is it, it's just a, another form in scientific guise of a, a, a divination that is attempting to, to contact um, the other side, the realm. And um, I would say this, Laura, that one cannot decry or criticize the using of a spirit board like the Ouija board and then turn around and start asking spirits in a house for them to answer a question. I mean, you can do it, of course, but you'll be logically inconsistent. You'll be speaking out of both sides of your mouth, so to speak. Mm -hmm. the, the logic is unassailable in my mind, and it should, underline should, it should be enough to convince us. I've been trained in logic. I'm not patting myself on my back, but I, I know what, I know what, um, I know what a good argument looks like and what it consists of and what a bad argument looks like and consists of. And this logic is simple and it's, it's simply, it's unassailable. But given simply human nature, many, if not most, in the paranormal community will resist the irresistible logic in this argument. Uh, and I found that to be true in the six years since that um uh, fateful experiment by my friend Dan. Uh, we're not as objective in our search for truth as we might think. Um, it's not just Christians who have presuppositions. We, we all do. Mm -hmm. And besides, my main point was that Deuteronomy 18 verses 11 and 12, uh, there's a litany of things that God finds detestable. And that's a really strong word in the Hebrew. Well, as it is in English, too. Um, it, and one of those is the practice of spiritism, mm -hmm. attempting to speak to the dead. And it says, and do not call forth the spirits of the dead. And the reasoning is as follows. Attempting to speak to the dead is sinful. Mm -hmm. Collecting EVPs. Okay, this is what is known in logic as a syllogism, Laura. Laura. Mm -hmm. And so listen to this logic. My reasoning is as follows. Attempting to speak to the dead is sinful. That's primary premise. Collecting EVPs is attempting to speak to the dead. Minor premise. Mm -hmm. Then the conclusion. Therefore, collecting EVPs is sinful. The logic is valid and sound, unassailable and irrefutable. So the Christian paranormal investigator is in a double jeopardy regarding the collection of EVPs, the parallel with the spirit board usage and the Bible's clear prohibition, which both the Old Testament and New Testament, well, the, which the Old Testament prohibits and the New Testament does not reverse. And just um, by implication, continues its condemnation of um, witchcraft and, and so forth. So when Dan asked me on the, on the air, uh, I basically said, well, Dan, no matter how convicted you feel to do this, no matter how much you fast and pray to seek, seek God's will, which, which he had done, mm -hmm you'll still be breaking God's objective law if you perform this experiment with a Ouija board. Mm -hmm. He, of course, knew I was going to say that, and I admire the fact that he would still ask my opinion anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, But this brings up a whole point that we were talking about before, Laura, and that is that for a Christian, the, ends, the end does not justify the means. Um, 
Dan was trying to prove a point, a good point, and that is the parallel, the dangerous parallel between um, EVPs and um, Ouija boards. But he was going against God's law mm -hmm. in order to try to prove God's word. And there are other ways to convince people than by... By sinning, by doing this experiment, that was my simple reasoning to him. But yeah. I, I admire his sincerity. I think he was sincerely wrong in the way he did it, but his point was was very well taken as far as the um, what they they are essentially the same thing. So, how serious is the practice of soliciting EVPs? Is it serious enough to warrant the drastic measure of using a Ouija board to publicly and graphically illustrate a point? I mean, lives, both eternal and temporal, are at stake, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, let's deal with the first question. From my reading of the Bible and from experience, I am convinced that everyone who, who attempts to collect EVPs is susceptible to all the dangers that attend spirit board usage or using the um, Ouija board. Yeah, it's just, it's, 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 it is a form of divination. It is an occult practice. Um you know, and I think some people may argue, well, what's what's wrong with trying to contact dead people? Okay, God's told us not to do it, um, but let's do it anyway. Well, if God's told you not to do it and he's shown through the Bible, if you do attempt to do it, it's Satan who's enabling you. It's demons that's enabling you. And that's why God doesn't want you to do it because he knows that you're actually going to be affected by demonic forces um, and they might say well you've got that presupposition then you've got that Christian bias um, to, to explain it that way well not not really if you look at it like you know think of some African witch doctors I'm thinking of the types who are particularly evil the types that will sacrifice children or animals and so on the, the types that the whole village is afraid of Mm. If you want healing, often the villagers will go to that witch doctor to obtain healing. Can he heal them? Yes, he can heal them. Their body, yes, he can. But he's using powers that come from demons um, that God has told us not to go near. So, you know, that's the kind of a... God doesn't want, to, want us to do it because he knows what it leads to. Sorry, Mark, uh, please continue. Oh, no, yeah, well, but thank you. I would, I would just say it add that demonic attach, attachments or oppression um, is happening with a frightening frequency to, frequency to lots of paranormal investigators mm -hmm. uh, and or ghost hunters. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the deep, dark secret of the paranormal community, and it, it just breaks my heart. This is a very troubling trend, but one I, I predicted it way back in 2009. You cannot, underline, you cannot regularly talk to demons. Mm -hmm. Even if you sincerely think they're dead humans, you can't talk to demons and not get burned in the process. Mm -hmm. um, and remember that the most insidious form of demonic assault is not necessarily where crosses are flying off the wall but where there is a quiet, steady influence of pure evil on the spiritual health of those who are in the house or are the, one, the ones who are do, doing the EVP collecting, or both. Mm -hmm. Non-Christian investigators or Christians are having their hearts further hardened by this dabbling in the demonic. Mm -hmm. This is what is so tragic about the belief in ghosts is that it, it diminishes the eternal significance or reality that you really are dealing with direct communication with demons. Mm -hmm. And I have found, um, not just on TV type thing, but also with investigators in general, that to the extent that they'll talk about demons at all, they'll usually refer to them as negative spirits, or hostile spirits, but, you know, almost anything other than demons. Sure, there's a lot of exceptions, Laura, but, you know, most, from my experience, just 
don't like the D word because I think it might summon the idea, hey, we really are under the Lordship of Christ or should be, and we shouldn't be messing with this, these things. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to go on a little bit more and say that the collecting of EVPs, and this breaks my heart to say this, is actually accelerating unbelievers' damnation because it's hardening them further. Mm -hmm. And it opens all the participants, the investigators as well as the clients, to horrible demonic attack. Again, the quiet, steady influence of the demonic over decades can cause a long walk in the wrong direction, Mm -hmm. spiritually speaking, or it could affect your health, mental or physical. The adoption of a more progressive or tolerant, and and this may show itself in the adoption of a more progressive or tolerant view of other religions, is a prime example of the insidious and noxious fruit of exposing, being exposed to high-octane levels of the diabolical this warrants a separate study, but Christians must tolerate and really love all people regardless of what they believe. But we must not take the next step and speak of the equal validity of all religions. That's, a, that's being a traitor to truth. Mm-hmm. In America, we have this thing, uh, Laura, called um, to- equal, toleration, equal toleration of all religions. And uh, that's a good thing. It's a biblical thing, I believe, as far as a, as a culture, but in a sense. But it's a small but profound step in the human mind to go from equal toleration of all religions to equal validity. Mm-hmm. And the second does not follow from the first. It's a non sequitur. Just because Christians are to love our Buddhist friends and to tolerate them, it doesn't imply that we believe that there's equal validity, you know, that all rows lead to the the top of the mountain type thing. Mm -hmm. You know, what really alarmed me that uh, to the point where I was compelled to write my book is that everyone who believes in and speaks to a lesbian ghost are really having direct communication with demons. It's just plain and simple as that. Who are, and... (sighs) These these beings, demons, are pure evil, and they are hell-bent on bending us into hell. Mm-hmm. So the stakes are incredibly high. They are ty- there are titanic ramifications to speaking to alleged ghosts in search of EVPs. Is it enough to biblically sanction performing an experiment with a Ouija board in order to maximally heighten people's awareness of life and death issues involved? No, I think Dan was really wrong in doing that. But, I mean, given what was at stake, um, the, the fact that not just in the paranormal community, Laura, but just because of how popular it's gotten, just culture in general mm-hmm. in the UK and in, in America people in general are just um, in droves accepting the notion of EVPs and so we have countless people countless people whose houses are now infested because of folks um, fascination with the paranormal in general and in particular trying to communicate with their dead loved one uh, or something along those lines, you know, mm-hmm. and, and they get themselves in trouble. So uh, one of the last things I would say is that um, don't get lost in that question when the main point is bright as a noonday sun. Um, the question is, will the paranormal community, will we, have the integrity to seriously reflect on the appropriateness of an activity, namely soliciting EVPs, even if it is the bread and butter form of evidence collection. And I would just challenge everyone that we all need to strive to be honest, 
seekers of truth, men and women of integrity who are willing to undergo the sometimes mental pain of having some of our cherished beliefs challenged or even changed. But, you know, it, it's worth as it says in the Bible, the peaceable fruits of righteousness that flow from knowing the truth, because the truth will set you free. Um, and we have to remember that if Jesus is Lord, then he must be Lord over the full spectrum of our lives. Mm -hmm. And that includes how we approach the paranormal. So... Absolutely, and you know, I would agree, you know, people might say, well, why do these spirits bother pretending to be ghosts? Why do they bother coming through and, and giving you messages all your life if you've been doing this your whole life? Well, because it's a distraction. They want to do anything but see you turn to Jesus Christ um, for salvation. So they yeah. will they will spend your whole life long coming through and giving you messages to keep you, if it, anything, to keep you away from Jesus Christ and salvation in him. Is it, that, is exactly. their, that is their ultimate goal. And yes, they can be very clever and give you lots of psychic premonitions that come true. Of course they can. But their mm -hmm. ultimate aim is simply to keep you away from Jesus Christ. We've just a couple of minutes left, Mark. Could you please give details of, of your book and then pray for the audience? Yes, thank you. I, I'm very glad to. Uh, the book that I wrote in 2009 or 10 um, is a logical and scientific and worldview analysis of what people have come to know as earthbound spirits or, or ghosts. And it's my best attempt at that time to um, accurately identify what the, what the true identity, I should say, of these alleged ghosts are they are in fact demons as uh laura has been saying that we need to uh test them the best way i would recommend for your pocketbook uh, or wallet to get is to just to look for seeing ghosts through god's eyes uh on on amazon or my name mark hunneman and um i hope to write another book soon on the fallacies of the notion of residual haunts um, which has got a lot of people um, confused. Mm -hmm. And um, with that, I guess I'll close with some prayer. Thank you. Okay. Heavenly Father, you are indeed the creator of heaven and earth and everything that is in it. You own the cattle on a thousand hills. And we forget I do, that you own me by virtue, first of all, of creating me, and then by your grace, recreating me, awakening me from spiritual death, and by virtue of redemption. And I pray, Laura and I both pray, that the words that were spoken today would be attended fully by the Holy Spirit and would minister deeply to the hearts and minds of those who are confused, perhaps hurting, maybe even suicidal, and that you would use these words to our weak words, that you would use our weakness as a platform for accentuating and revealing your power and it's not by flesh nor by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord. So for your glory, Lord Jesus, we offer up this time and pray that you would touch people with the truth and free them into the freedom for which Jesus has set us free. And we pray in his all-powerful name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Mark. And I look forward to part two when we'll speak to you again very soon. Thank you very much. It's been great. <laughs> and, and listeners, please go to my blog. You'll find other articles by Mark and other um, articles he's written and other radio shows we did. And that's on our spiritualquest.com and type in Mark Hunneman. Thank you so much and tune in again next time. God bless you. Mm -hmm.
The views expressed in this production may not necessarily be those of Eternal Radio. Eternal Radio. Now Eternal Radio is even easier to listen to. You can do this by simply visiting eternalradio.org.uk. That's eternalradio.org.uk and clicking on the Listen Now link. Alternatively, you can listen in on your phone by downloading the TuneIn app or Eternal Radio's very own dedicated apps for both Android and iPhone. It's also possible to tune in on a variety of other platforms including Amazon's Fire TV. Also, if you have any questions for me or for other Eternal Radio hosts, please email us at onairnow at eternalradio.org.uk That's onairnow at eternalradio.org.uk